Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the CreditRepairShop.com. And in today's video, we're going to talk about the debt that is being released into the market. And there is some surprises, some very, uh, I'm very surprised with, uh, with, with the uh, charge-off dates on these. It's going to surprise you. It's going to shock you. So we're going to talk about that. Also, I'm going to talk about a uh, summons, uh, individual that's being sued, taken to court, and there's some mistakes that they made, and I want to help you not make those mistakes. But it doesn't mean that it's the end of the road for them. It's just that there's going to be extra work that has to happen to see if they're going to be able to win uh, against the lawsuit that they have coming against them. So first, I want to start got a tax refund back here for one dollar and forty nine cents one dollar and forty nine cents was my refund uh, I must have overpaid on something that made them kick that back to me so let's get started here and uh, I haven't been making videos because you know it's tax time we're doing taxes for five different businesses and we've also been doing some upgrades to the credit repair shop with software and it's just been making sure that I dedicated our time to uh, training making sure that everyone here understands that uh, with the new uh, customer relations software that we're using also uh, we've been looking at uh, results that have been coming in and seeing what's working and what's uh, seen the kind of hit a stalemate with the bureaus and uh, testing is done on that and we've been getting good results uh, from from making adjustments to the letters that we send out uh, to the uh, credit reporting agencies all right so let's get into it here the first one here we got a 3.3 million dollar uh, uh, major credit cards uh, two 1,546 accounts, average charge off date is 2003. This isn't the one that I'm talking about with the charge off date. I'll save that one for last. Uh, next one we got, let's see here. We got a major credit card and some jewelry debt, uh, 3,242 accounts, $3.1 million. Average charge off date is 2007. To 2015 average balance was $983 on that one. Got another one here, uh, $7.3 million. Uh, mixed credit card, major credit card banks. Uh, the um, the charge off date 2000 to 2010. This is crazy that they're even attempting to sell this and have people go after it. Uh, $1,989 average balance on those. And then the one that caught my attention, $1.7 million average balance is $1,274. 1,355 accounts. These are credit cards and payday, uh, payday loan. And the average charge off date is 1125 of 2020. 1125 of 2020. When I see something like this, this is a signal that they are about to start releasing a lot of charge off debt that happened in 2020. This is the first one that I've seen available. Uh, and mainly because what I think happens with these is that they're, they're going to sell these first and bigger accounts. To some of the larger portfolio uh, uh, collection company buyers and let them go after them and then they're going to kind of weed down so i it would not surprise me that this file has either been worked before and it had more than 1300 uh, individuals on it and now they're working uh, got this one here for 1355 individuals uh, that had charge off accounts this is payday loans and major credit cards and also a few installment loans so these could be repossession debt uh, you never know uh, so let's start from the top before we get into the uh, summons 
on what you should do. The first thing that you should do uh, is that you should look and see if this debt is past statute of limitation. Obviously, the last one that we just mentioned is not going to be past statute of limitations for any state. Uh, but you always want to check to see if it's past statute of limitations. You can go to my website, thecreditrepairshop.com. Go to my blog. It's at the bottom. Type in statute of limitations, and it'll bring up a page that will show you the statute of limitations for debt in your state. And what that means is that if it's past that legal statute of limitations and they have not gotten a judgment against you, they will not be able to collect that debt. Uh, now, if it's past statute of limitations, first thing you do is you need to, uh, there's a letter that I made for you so you don't have to guess. The links are below this video. You need to send them a letter that you're notifying them that they're trying to collect a debt that is past the legal statute of limitations to collect. I'm giving you that letter. Uh, if it's not past legal statute of limitations, this is the next step that I want you to do. Is I want you to use a letter that I have below this video. It's a cease and desist collection activities. This makes them answer, number one, a debt validation, but it takes... Uh, them through some other steps of making sure that an attorney with their company, with their law firm, has reviewed the file fully because they can't just try to come after you. Well, they can, but they, if you look at the letter that they give you when they're trying to collect a debt from you, it always states that no attorney has reviewed it. You don't have to take my word for it, look at the letter when you get it, or go pull one up that you already got before. The reason why they say that is because for if an attorney reviewed it, the attorney is saying that they've reviewed all of the documentation to prove that you owe that debt. They're not going to do that at that small level. And even when it goes to court, they sometimes don't even do it fully. They just believe that people are not going to challenge them and uh, make them have to prove that, number one, every item that they have uh uh, disclose is true and then make in also other items that they maybe didn't get that they're trying to make the claim when in the dollar amount is true so uh, to give you an example when you are sued in court they will send bank statements and all types of stuff attorney prepared it they got affidavits from the company but that attorney has not really reviewed everything to substantiate the amount that they're trying to collect and that's why when you do the response to the court summons, you can actually make them either say that they're going to dismiss it or ask for more time to gather that information because they don't expect you to do it. So the first thing, the next thing I want you to do, if it's past statute of limitations, I want you to send that cease and desist collection activities. That's step one. See what they come back with. Maybe in, in a lot of cases, they're not going to come after you because they don't want to go through the headache of getting all the documentation from another party, because they, they don't buy this directly from the original creditor. So, so they're going to have to go to the portfolio buyer, and then the portfolio buyer is going to have to go and get the information from the original creditor. But once the original creditor sells this debt, they don't care. They're not wanting to get involved in all of that. They're saying, you bought it. It's yours. We gave you everything. You know, it's in your hands now. So that's why that cease and desist letter can work on there. But let's just say that it, if it doesn't, then the next step is you need to ask for a full validation of the debt, and I give you that letter too. So uh, in one of the links is going to give you the statute of limitations letter and a debt validation letter. The other link will give you the cease all collection activities letter. Uh, so you should get all three of those, and then you should plan your strategy on what you need to do to uh, stop the debt collector from moving forward on your debt. Now, uh, you might be asking, how do I know if it's past statute of limitations to collect? The, you, you go to my website and you get that, go to my blog and you see the statute of limitations for each state. But the next thing that you need to do is you need to get uh, rep your credit reports and you can go to our website uh, your, the number three scores.com. That link is below here also. And you need to look in the section in the comments where it says charge off date from the original creditor, not from a debt collector or, or someone who purchased the debt and maybe 
place the information on your credit reports. That does not matter. What matters is the date that the original creditor did the charge off. From that date is when the statute of limitations clock starts to tick. So as long as you don't do anything to reset that clock, which is what we're going to go into with this uh, individual here with the court summons, if you don't do anything to reset that clock, you're okay with statute of limitations. Um, now, here's the thing that you can do that can reset the clock, is you can, because they make threats and they, you know, say they're going to contact your uh, employer, all these types of things, which they're not allowed to do. They're not allowed to threaten you over debt. They're not even allowed to say that they're going to sue you and not take you to court. They cannot say, if you don't pay this debt, that we are going to sue you. So if you've ever had a company debt collector call you and they said they're going to sue you over a debt and then they don't sue you and it's like a year later and someone else is trying to come after you, you can file a complaint against that debt collector and you can also file it against the new debt collector because they cannot make that threat to you without doing that action right away. Now, it might vary from state to state on when they have to actually take that action to take you to court, but they are not allowed, according to the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, to threaten to sue you and not sue you uh, but it's tricky and the reason why they might do it in it is because they're going to say if i threaten to sue them and don't sue them they're gonna everything is quiet they're not gonna be saying call me because they're not gonna call me back the, the debt collector back and say sue me because you threaten to sue me most people are not going to do that they're going to just let everything stay quiet so that's uh you have to be careful of uh, making a payment because if you make a payment no matter how small it is you are actually resetting the, the date for the statute of limitations now let's get into what happened with an individual that is in that situation where they made a payment because they were threatening to call their employer and all of these things you you know if you've ever had a debt collector call you what they might say to you and they made some payments to this debt collection company that had purchased it from an original creditor. And then they decided to stop paying and then the company is now taking them to court. Now, because they made a payment, in essence, it's like making a new contract with the debt collection company. It's like saying, yes, I do owe this debt and to prove that you are right about me owing this debt, I'm going to make a payment. And then that backs up the debt collector by saying, hey, they made a payment to us. Obviously, they agreed, and this is a new contract. This is a new contract. So uh, the individual decided that they just cannot continue paying, and they're, now the debt collector is suing them. Now, these are the options. And, I'm, and when I give these options, uh, it's not saying that this individual is going to win, but these are the options because when they take you to court, they have to make a court summons or citation in some, some areas, and they have to uh, make their allegations to the court about the debt that they're trying to collect. And so what you can do is you can write your responses to the court summons and the way for this individual, which is the way for anyone that is trying to respond to a court summons, is that you want to make them prove every aspect of the debt. Now, one problem that this individual has that most people don't have is that most people have never paid the debt collector anything. So there's no new contract that went into action. But even with being that being said, the individual can still request a full debt validation all charges that they're trying to claim to substantiate the amount that they're claiming in the court summons you always have a right to do that that means that they have to give you original documentation not just documents like a last bank state a last statement 
uh, uh, in a affidavit from the original creditor saying that they sold the debt in a debt portfolio. No, you need more than that. You want all of the, the paint, the charges that they're claiming to substantiate the amount that they're claiming. You didn't just make one charge for uh, $10,000. You want them, you, someone's probably done charges that equal 10,000. So you have a right to get all of that. I want all of that information so I can review it. And this is not running from it. So the, the court will participate with you on asking for those documents. So you say, give me the documents showing all of these charges. Give me the documents showing that I signed for these charges or some type of a internet stamp. All of these things that they make us do with uh, when you sign up, click a box online or DocuSign, all of that stuff. But when you're making purchases online or purchases in the store, give me those receipts to prove that these amounts are right. I disagree on the amount or I don't recollect the amount. Let me see the charges that equal this. Let me see my payments that I've made to make sure that these balances are reconciled. Let me see the interest rate that was charged to me to make sure that that was not out of bounds for our state. Um, and let me see the contract if, between me and you, the debt collector. Now we have a little issue with this one because this individual did make payments. They're gonna say, well, we have an initiated payment to prove that we have a contract, but that we need to make them prove all of the other information in the debt uh, that they're saying in the court summons. Uh, see, and these, some of the court summons that I see, some of them are very short. This one here is very short. And I believe that it could be very short because they have the, uh, the individual made a payment, but it's still worth, no matter what, it's still worth making them prove every aspect of the debt. No matter what, it is still worth making them prove every aspect of a debt that they're trying to collect. So now, uh, we'll be ending the video here. I'm going to be getting to making a little bit more, hopefully, next week. Uh, stuff is starting to clear up a little bit. Sent in the taxes. Tax man is getting a big check from us. Uh, so they should be very happy. Um, remember, if you need help with your credit, go to our website, thecreditrepairshop.com. Go to the video immediately. Watch the video, What Makes Us Different. If you can follow that process, we invite you to become a client of our company. If you can't, please choose someone else. If you need your credit reports and scores, please go to the website, your the number three scores.com and keep that monitoring service because you want to know what's on there, the changes and everything. I really appreciate it because this is one way that I help monetize my time for coming on here and uh, making the videos for everyone here. And remember to get the cease and desist collection activities letter, the statute of, limit, statute of limitations letter, and the debt validation letter. Those links are below here. And also, I do have uh, the t-shirts. I'm surprised that a lot of people don't buy the t-shirts. Get the t-shirts. Uh, me and my wife wear them all the time she, she wears hers around the house i'm like look at that good credit does matter it does matter oh there was something that i wanted uh, i don't know if i mentioned it in my last video i got a letter uh and i'll be making some videos because we're going to do uh rv trips uh this year but something that happened to me uh when i financed uh our rv i paid a substantial amount down and then uh, finance the rest and something something that happened that proves that good credit matters. Number one, when I made the purchase, I had uh, me and my wife, we were double teaming uh, the uh, finance person. And we said, you know, we want to make sure that we get the best. We made it clear that we want the best or we won't continue with the transaction. And uh, I already know that they came down to a very, very, very good interest rate. I mean, very low. And uh, and then we asked for more. We asked for a better rate after. <laughs> so right before we were about to sign the documents, we said, again, are you sure? And this is a trick that you can play with when you're buying a car, anything that you're financing. They'll say, do we have a coupon out there? That's what they'll say. Do we have a coupon that we can use? 
they all had a coupon that they can use because this is a way that they can save a deal that is not that potentially could be stopped and they don't want to do that they want to make the sale so <laughs> he yells to the other finance guy do we have any coupons available he said yes and that took down the deal another quarter percent so we had already got it down one percent and then they we said well you know are you sure and if you if you make it firm they're gonna feel like you're gonna leave and then they said do we have a coupon yes they took it down another quarter percent well guess what i got a letter from the bank that said your credit mr williams your credit is so good which my credit is now three eight hundred and thirty five which means that there's only 60, I think that, what is it, 8, 835 minus 900. There's only 65 more points unless they raise it that, that I can get that would make it the, not, you know, the top of the top, like the best, because there's no other, you, you can't go any higher than that. They sent a letter saying your credit is so good that you qualify to have another, another quarter percent taken off for you that are not uh you know that don't pay attention to quarter points and one percent because it seems so small when you add that up over a period of time you're talking about thousands of dollars that are staying in your pocket rather than going into the bank's pocket so it's very important that you have good credit now, I'm not saying that you do this stuff overnight, but what I'm saying is that you got to keep the focus and you got to keep pushing because when you get to that position, no matter what, when they want people that have excellent credit and they're going to do everything to make sure that they keep you as a customer now and they want you to remember them by the way that they treated you for other things that you might end up buying in the future. So I'm going to end the video here. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of thecreditrepairshop.com. Thank you and have a great weekend.